Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have mentioned إِنَّمَا أَنَا لَكُمْ مِثْلَ الْوَالِدِ لِوَلَدِ أُعَلِّمُكُمْ I am to you like what a father is to a child. I teach you, I educate you. A father, he teaches his child every, sim- sim- every single thing. From going to the toilet, how he should position himself, how he should wash himself, how he should come out from the toilet, and every other aspect of life. That is what a father is to a child. It is an expression of the love of a father to the child, that he teaches the child and he empowers the child. So today, inshallah, we will be discussing few basic aspects of tahara. Of cleansing ourselves and purifying ourselves. Shariat has emphasized a lot on taharat and cleansing ourselves and purifying ourselves. Almighty Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala revealed an ayat of the Quran Kareem to Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praising the people of Quba. Quba is a place just out of Madina to Munawwara. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says about them, فِيهِ رِجَالُ يُحِبُّونَ أَن يَتَطَهَّرُوا In Quba, there are men, there are people who love to cleanse and purify themselves. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُطَّهِّرِينَ And Almighty Allah Tabarakuta loves those people that cleanse and purify themselves. When this verse was revealed, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed the Ansar, Ya Ma'ashar Ansar, إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَثْنَى عَلَيْكُمْ فِي تُهُورِكُمْ O oh, people of Ansar, Almighty Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has praised you all on your people's need of purification. Fama tuhurukum. How do you people cleanse yourself? What is unique about your people's need of cleansing and purifying yourselves? Among three things they mentioned to Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nastanji bil ma. When we go to relieve ourselves, we go to the toilet, then we cleanse and purify ourselves with water. In those days, there was a shortage of water, and people used to use stone and uh, uh, to cleanse and purify themselves. They used to make an effort and sacrifice to get water to cleanse and purify themselves. Nabi Akarim Sam mentioned, this is it. This is why Almighty Allah wa has, uh, uh, has praised you because of your taharat and your cleanliness. In one hadith, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reported to have mentioned, At-Tahoor Shatrul Iman. To cleanse yourself, to purify yourself, remove dirt and filth from your body, your external body, that is half of Iman and a concept narration, the great portion of Iman. From this we understand, how important it is for us to concentrate on the basic practical aspects of life. And we should not feel ashamed to learn and educate ourselves on those things. Today, we will discuss few adabs and etiquettes of going to the toilet. When a person has an urge to relieve himself. It's a natural urge. He wants to relieve himself. He should not withhold himself. That is harmful and detrimental to a person's health. And that medical experts will advise you. From the masala point of view, if you have an urge, you want to relieve yourself, it is makru for you to perform salat in that condition. This is called taf'ul akhbasayin. Where you try to avert the, the two evils within you, 
where you want to relieve yourself and you're trying to withhold yourself. It's a natural urge. You have to perform your salat, but now you need to relieve yourself. Are you going to concentrate on relieving yourself or are you going to concentrate in your salat? In your salat, your heart and your mind must be fully concentrated on Almighty Allah. But when you've got a natural urge, now your mind won't be there. You just want to fulfill a duty, execute a farz. But then not the purpose of the salat. The purpose of the salat gives your heart and your mind to Almighty Allah wa ta'ala. And therefore, free yourself from every distraction. Likewise, it's not only in salat, any other important duty that you have to do, first go relieve yourself. If you're not going to relieve yourself, you're going to impair your responsibility. In Kitab al there's a narration when a Qadi issuing a judgment, a decree, and the Qadi himself, a judge, listening to all intricate, intricate cases, where the Qadi got an urge, and he wants to continue listening to a case, and to complete the case. It's haram for him to do that. Then impairing his judgment, he must go relieve himself first, and then come and sit on the bench to listen to the case. Before going to the toilet, if you've got anything in you that has the name of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, remove it. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a ring. And it was inscribed on the ring, Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad at the bottom, Rasul and Allah's name on the top. And it is stated in a hadith, when Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا دَخَلَ الْخَلَى نَذَعَ خَاتَمَةً when Nabi Karim Sallallahu used to go to a toilet, he used to remove his ring. Now that applies to Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the name of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala was there. So before we go to the toilet, in order to respect the name of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, check yourself if you got anything. Some of us may have rings that have inscriptions of the name of Allah. And in modern times, if you got a cell phone, and we got an app of the Quran in the cell phone, if possible, if possible, then keep that cell phone out of the toilet. Yes, sometimes it, for security reasons it may not be practical, but wherever it is possible, then try to practice on this hadith and respect the name of Allah. The Quran is in the phone. It got an app of the there. So as far as possible, keep the, the, the uh, cell phone out of the toilet. When you enter the toilet, enter with the left foot. The principle is, Anything that is apparently bad, not necessarily bad, apparently bad. And when going to a toilet is a natural, answering the call of nature, it's a demand of nature, you have to go to a toilet, but apparently it is a bad place in relation to the place outside the toilet. So therefore, enter with the left foot. And when you enter the toilet, then recite this dua. Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min al-khubusi wal khabais. Allah, I seek refuge in you from the male shayateen and from the female shayateen. Nabi Kareem Sahasa mentioned, Inna hadhi al-hushush muhtazara. These toilets, these toilets, they have the presence of the shayateen and the jinns in it. So, before going there, you're going to be unclothing yourself, the shayateen thrive on that. And in one hadith, they mentioned, say, Bismillah. And the moment you say Bismillah, that becomes the barrier between you and the shayateen. Now, the shayateen will not be able to interfere with you. When you go in the toilet, watch your position. It is mentioned in the hadith, narrated by Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu ta'ala no, إِذَا أَتَيْتُمُ الْخَائِدِ فَلَا تَسْتَقْبِلُ الْقِبْلَ وَلَا تَسْتَقْبِلُهَا When you go to the toilet, don't face your front to the Qibla or your back towards the Qibla. Your front towards the Qibla or your back towards the Qibla, do not face it. Now, this facing the front and the back towards the Qibla, that is an expression of our Qibla. Wherever we are, we have respect for the salient features of Deen and Islam. وَمَن يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِن تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ That person who respects the salient features of Deen and Islam, that is from the piety of the heart. 
So wherever we are, we've got the azmat and the respect of the Qibla of the Kaaba Sharif also in our hearts. Even when we're in privacy and isolation, when we even the toilet also be, con- be considered to the direction and the azmat of the Qibla. Don't face your front or don't face your back to the Qibla. That's an expression of respect for the Qibla Sharif. Now, in some instances, the toilet is faced towards uh, the Qibla direction, the front and the back. What do you do in that situation? If you adjust yourself a little bit, a few degrees to the right or to the left, then uh, one will be absolved from uh, showing disrespect to the uh, Kaaba Sharif or to the Qibla Sharif. Yes, the principle in Salat is different. In Salat, if there's a deviation of the Qibla for 24 degrees to a maximum of 45 degrees, right or left, then that will be also a valid Qibla. Because in the case of the Qibla, we are not resp- uh, our responsibility not to face the actual Qibla, فَوَلِّ وَجَكَ شَتْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ We have to face the direction of the Qibla and the direction of the Qibla to a maximum, it can go right up till 45 degrees. But uh, deviation of maximum 45 degrees in the case of Salat is still regarded to be Qibla, but in the case of the toilet, little deviation will not be Qibla and one will be absolved from that particular responsibility. Make sure when you are relieving yourself, no urine drops fall on you. And the way we, nowadays when we make the toilets, etc., we need to be very, very careful that uh, how we position the uh, jug and how uh, we cleanse ourselves, make sure no urine falls on you. It is mentioned in the hadith in Bukhari Sharif, Marra Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala qabreen, wa huma yu'adzaban wa ma yu'adzaban fi kabir. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam happened to pass by two qabars, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was informed that they were being punished. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told, told they were not punished for something very, very big, not something difficult to abstain from. And one of the two persons that were punished in the qabr, kana la li bawlihi. When he used to relieve himself, he would not exercise precaution, urine drops would fall on him. And the other person, kana yamshi bin namima. And the other person that was being punished, is because of the evil act of gossiping. One is external sikha, one is external impurity, one is internal impurity. External impurity related impurity, uh, to internal impurity. Sharia close all those are related to external impurity so that we are sensitive to internal impurity, that internal impurity that does also come into us. When you go to a toilet and when you are washing yourself, don't use your right hand. It is mentioned in the hadith, Nabi Karim Sahasa mentioned, إِذَا أَتَى الْخَلَى فَلَا يَمُسُّ ذَكَرَهُ بِيَمِينِ وَلَا يَتَمَسَّحْ بِيَمِينِ when you're washing yourself, don't use your right hand. For anything that is apparently bad, n- not bad, it is natural, you have to wash yourself, but don't use your right hand, use your left hand. When you make it stinja, also use your left hand. Yes, unless there is an uzzah, then excuse. For example, if somebody broke his le- left hand, now there's no way he have to use the right hand, that's a different issue. And when you're relieving yourself, don't relieve yourself in a hole or any place where there's a crack or a creek. Now, especially in a modern toilet, we don't have that, that, that problem. But in the olden days, that was a problem. Or, for example, if you're traveling somewhere and you need to relieve yourself, don't make sure there's no hole, no creek, don't urinate in that. Nabi Akari, the reason for that is there's a possibility there may be a creature. You urinating there, one snake might pop out. Or you urinating there, what if the shaitan is here, is ducking in there. And you could, when you attack the shaitan, that, that the shaitan will come back to attack you. And the last point, many men, many males complain that uh, after they're relieving themselves, they made wudu, everything, they perceive urine drops. The common problem among many, many males. The Dalwista, very often we get these kind of queries. The, the solution is in the hadith. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told to Jibra, by Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam that uh, uh, when you make wudu, uh, bala tawadza, wan zahfarja. That when you make wudu, after making wudu, take some water and sprinkle around the private part or in the under, the, on the undergarments. So that when you perceive any witness, you can attribute it to that witness. No, you put that water there. That what that that's that not the witness of the urine. Yes, that is to avert a waswasa or a wasp of the shaitan. But from the masla point of view, that if you are certain that your urine drop have come out, then indeed in that situation your wuzu have regarded to have broken. But in many instances, sometimes it is just air comes out and a person feels as though urine have come out. So to avert that waswasa 
And for, to avert the shaitan thriving on that and disturbing your salah. Very often you're performing your salah and you're thinking, oh, my namaz is not right, my wuzu is not right. Then the moment you follow, uh, follow the simple guidelines and these principles, now you just don't worry about the shaitan, you concentrate on your salah and give your heart and soul in your salah. And lastly, when you come out from the toilet, thank Allah. He made our stomach work. He relieved the dirt and impurity from us. And coming out, you come out with the right foot. And you say, Hufranak. Hufranak means, Shukranak. Shukr to Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Otherwise, there's no point of uh, asking for forgiveness if you answer the call of nature. So, it is, Hufranak, uh, Ikwa, Shukranak. Allah, we thank you for uh, this great ni'mat and bounty, for removing the impurity from us. And then we read this dua, Alhamdulillah, Allazi azhaba anil adha wa afani. All praise is due to Allah, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, who removed this dirt, this impurity from us, and he has given us goodness. These are a few basic rules and regulations we implemented in our lives. Inshallah, we we'll live a more quality life of a Muslim. Allah grant us tawfiq wa akhir da'wana. والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر